Hello and welcome to Mr. Valentin's YouTube video for Ellie Wiesel's Night. Today we're going to go over the format of your test, uh, what will, you will see on it, what will appear. Um, so, let's begin. The first part of your test is going to be a matching column and you're going to need to know what characters are important for the matching column. Um, so, the characters you should know, definitely, without a doubt, in alphabetical order are... Um, and it can also be locations and various um, Jewish-related items. So, Bea, Buna, Kabbalah, Juliak, uh, forgot the Kaddish, Mengel, Moshi, Rabbi Eliahu, Mrs. Schachter, the town of Syed, Tispora, Ali Wazel, and the Zohar. So there's your full list of characters. So what should you know? about these characters. You should know that Bea is Ellie's older sister. Uh, she lives in the story. Buna is one of the main camps, all right, and it eventually gets evacuated at the end of the climax. You have Kabbalah, all right, which is Jewish mysticism. That's the thing that Ali wants to learn. The Kaddish, which is the prayer for the dead. Juliak is the boy um, who plays musical instruments. Uh, he plays the violin in the story. Uh, Mengeli was the doctor. who committed sadistic um, experiments. Let me just expand that. Experiments. There's no way that's spelled correctly. Fix that. Good. All right. Moshi, Moshi the beetle, um, is the person um, who will teach Ellie the Kabbalah? In many ways, he is, Mo Moshi is Ellie's mentor. Rabbi Eliahu is the person who, um, who has his son abandon him. And Ellie thinks about abandoning his father at that moment. Mrs. Schachter is the woman um, in the exposition of the story who sees the fire. Syed is the town that Ellie and his family live in at the beginning. Again, exposition. Tispora is... Ellie's youngest sister. And finally, Wizzell. All right, obviously Ellie. All right, um, the main character, the protagonist, the person who is writing the book. You might also want to add narrator, things like that. And Zohar, all right, are the Kabbalistic texts. So these are just characters you should be familiar with. Um, oh, just remembered. I left a character off, so we certainly want to add also. So sorry. Stein. And that's um, Ellie's relative in the camp. Alrighty. 
So those are the main characters that you should know. Again, it's a matching column, so all of these may or all of these will appear, but they may not all be the answers. So just keep that in mind. Great. The next part of your test is all based on that PowerPoint that we did at the beginning of the novel. Um, I'm going to put various things down. Um, so you'll want to look at that PowerPoint again. It's posted on the website. And um, just go through it. You also have a, a dictation of notes, uh, any of those things. Um, this is going to cover the major things, but there may be things left out that you should know um, that could potentially be on the test. All right, so um, importantly, all right, um, is the fact that the Holocaust was the systematic bureaucratic and state-sponsored persecution and murder of approximately and this is where numbers get wrong all right we can definitely pinpoint the amount of Jewish people which is about six million um, but the numbers vary after that, so we'll say roughly 11, and the number can go all the way up to, depending on statistics, million people by the Nazi regime. And its collaborators. All right. Uh, importantly, all right, especially is the fact that it's systematic, bureaucratic, and state sponsor. Systematic means that it was planned, that this wasn't something that just happened by accident. Bureaucratic, meaning it's political, that the Holocaust wasn't, it's not an accident, and that needs to kind of be emphasized. State-sponsored persecution. Um, the state-sponsored part is important because it shows that this was a thing done by an entire community of people. Just going to move that down. All right. Importantly, Holocaust is a word of Greek origin. Uh, which means, quote, sacrifice by fire. going to just shrink some of this information so that way we have it to the side. Um, so we talked about all various different types of buildings. Um, we talked about some of the memorials that came into existence because of it. All right. Um, it's important that a lot of this was due to the ideas of social Darwinism. Which is to say that um, it was believed that the people in the concentration camps, specifically Jewish people, were somehow racially inferior that they were a subclass of some kind. And so that kind of idea keeps keeps developing from that. Um, we talked about various revolutions and um, social democratic parties and stuff like that. That's not too important. Um, we should know that part of the reason this all came about was, and I want to make sure I spell this correctly, the Treaty of Versailles, uh, which was one of the peace treaties at the end of World War I. Uh, it ended the state war between Germany and the Allied powers. Um, it was signed in 1919. And it causes a lot of 
uh, Germany's tr troubles and turmoils uh, during this time. Um, one of the major things that happens that we talked about in class was the uh, devaluation of the mark. The mark is their monetary value. We talked a little bit about giving the American version of his name, Wilhelm Busch, All right. um, and he's the person who uh, adopts the racial prejudice of the supposed typical, quote, Jewish nose. We also talked about um, who the SS are, uh, and we learned that the SS um, was basically Hitler's army and go-to people. Um, it stood for two things. They were known as both the Shield Squadron, or in German, the So, we have that. We also learned about the various um, different color triangles. So I'm going to move to a blank page so that way we can review that. So we have the various um, symbols and what they mean. So we should know that the red triangle was for political prisoners, communists, anyone to do with politics of any kind, uh, social democrats, freemasons, anarchists, we have the green triangle, whoops, The green triangle, which stood for um, habitual criminals. And remember, the habitual criminals uh, often became capos, such as Eidic. We have blue triangles, which were for foreign labor, foreign forced labor. We also talked about how there were pink triangles, and specifically for homosexuals. We have black triangles. And those were for people who were known as asocials. Um, this was often, you know, people who were work shy, mentally retarded or mentally ill, alcoholics, vagrants, um, beggars, pacifists, prostitutes of any kind. We had brown triangles. 
which for the Roma were what are known as the gypsies. And then finally, at the end, we had uninverted red triangles. which were for prisoner of wars. So an enemy PO dub, W. But it'd also be used for spies and deserters. Oh, nope. There we go. Deserters. Okay. All right, so know your triangles and symbols associated with those as well. You should know literary terms, obviously. And there's, there's a lot of literary terms that we do know um, that we've talked about in class and et cetera. Um, literary terms that I don't need to go over, like simile and metaphor and foreshadowing. If you have questions of those about those, you should bring those to review. Um, but we have some new literary terms that might cause some difficulty. All right, so I'm going to kind of shrink these and kind of toss them to the side. All right, because we know those things. Things like um, imagery, you know them, so we don't need to talk about that. I'd rather focus on the literary terms that may pose difficulty. So we have three different types of irony in this story. We have situational irony. We have dramatic irony. And we have verbal irony. Situational irony is when you, you expect one thing to happen, or a character expects one thing to happen. But then the opposite occurs. Then, of course, you have dramatic irony, which is when the audience knows more than the characters, which is often true in this story. And we also have verbal irony, which is uh, when a character says something but means the opposite. So those literary terms are going to be the, I think, the ones that cause the most difficulty because they're the ones that can be easily confused. But there's some other literary terms we should keep an eye out for. Um, you should be aware of rhetorical question, aside. Anaphora or anaphora. And kennings. These are for, uh, shall we say, newish. Uh, oh, and one more. Flash forward. Whoa. That is some rhetorical question right there. So let's fix that. There we go. So... A rhetorical question is when a question is posed that has no answer. Um, often, to make you think about something, make the reader or a character think about something. An aside is something that's usually associated with theater. In this instance, an aside, um, yeah, is when a character reveals private information to the audience. We have anaphora, which is the repetition of words at the beginning of a sentence. of Kennings is uh, a two-word 
poetic renaming. Of someone or something. And finally we have a flash forward, which is uh, a hint into future events. Sort of like a flashback, but the difference is uh, it's a reminder to the reader. In this instance, it's a reminder to the reader that Ellie uh, makes it out of the story okay. All right. So know your literary terms. You'll be tested on how well not only you know them, but how you can use them in practice. And then we have the plot diagram, the labeling the plot diagram. Uh, this time you won't have to label it as much as tell me when certain events occurred. Um, what I'm going to do is write it out with my hand. Um, so the handwriting might look a little shaky from the iPad, but um, the beginning part right here, you all know is the exposition. So you're going to be given various events, and you're going to have to tell me when they occurred. Uh, remember, exposition is everything. Characters, setting, um, meeting all of them. And it's everything leading up to the inciting incident. And this inciting incident is this dotted line. And what was the inciting incident of the story? The inciting incident, of course, was the arrival at Auschwitz. Anything before that is the exposition. So meeting Ellie, meeting uh, Bea, uh, finding out about Moshi the Beetle, Moshi the Beetle getting deported, um, the waiting around with the phylacteries, things like that. The line going up, you need to know what this is called. And of course, this is called the complication. complication in this text was fairly long. It included uh, events like um, the Pipals being tortured, um, stuff about the, that bomb that fell. Um, it could even be basic things that happened early in the complication, like um, Ellie meeting Mengele, or um, later on he meets Yasi and Tibby. All that is complication. At the top, we have the climax. And remember, the climax is everything. After Ellie loses faith in God, then it triggers the climax. And that leads through everything until the liberation of the camps. After the liberation of camps, we have the denouement. Make sure you know how to spell denouement. Remember, you lose points every time you spell it incorrectly. All right, and the denouement is everything leading to Ellie's father's death. And then finally, the last chapter of the book is the resolution. That's Ellie looking at his corpse in the mirror. I'm not going to get into the details of this because we've done this numerous times. And you've made several of these, so you should have this to review for yourself. But you do want to review it and know where they go. The last part of your test, I can't go over. Uh, you'll be given a reading passage. And this passage will be just set up just like it would be on the Regents. You'll have to read the passage. Um, you'll have to annotate. That'll be worth five points. From there, um, you will have five multiple choice questions at three points apiece uh, about the passage. So if you've been doing your careful reading, um, this won't present an issue. It should be noted that the passage that you receive is from Knight. Um, and it comes from something that occurred in the denouement. That's all I can say. Um, so that'll be important. Um, and then of course you'll have five questions that you'll have to write about. You know, in line six, there's an example of what literary term. Uh, in line seven, the reader sees the word blank. If 
from the context of the passage to find this word. And remember, you have to include the part of speech. Um, the importance of certain lines you'll need to know, and you'll need to know the sy what's the important syntax. So you'll have to find a sentence with interesting syntax. Remember, syntax is sentence structure, and when you're looking at sentence structure, you're looking for maybe like a one-worded sentence, or a sentence with an ellipsis, or a sentence with a question mark or an exclamation point, something to bring it out. From there, uh, that's pretty much it. So review all this information. Uh, if you have questions, bring them to extra help. And that's pretty much all I can say. So study, make sure you've read the text, look over your guides, and you should be just fine to do quite well on this test.